The United States could see a recession next year. That's the prediction from some banks and economists. It comes as prices continue to rise at the grocery store, hardware store, and more. The Fed uh, plans to raise interest rates through this year and beyond to help slow down that inflation. But banks say a recession will be the result. So joining me now is Joe Cryer, partner at uh, EWE Trading LLC, to discuss the situation and what it may mean for your pocketbook. So uh, first off, thank you for being here this morning. Sure, good to see you. Thanks for having me, Brianna. And I'm curious, it's why are the alarm bells sounding off right now all of a sudden? Yeah, things seem pretty good, don't they? I mean, everybody's got money and uh, everyone seems to have a job, wants one. Uh, but the problem is with things getting out of control, the feds don't want our grocery bills and everything else going up at 15 to 20 percent a year. We just can't stomach that in our pocketbooks. So their answer to that is to raise interest rates. And something that we refer to in the business a lot is the yield curve. And uh, you may have heard this term, an inverted yield curve has preceded each of the last six recessions. And as it's turned out, we've had an inverted yield curve for only moments in the last couple of weeks. And that's got the alarm bells sound. And I mean, the president just announced, uh, you know, not long ago that 6.6 million jobs were created. So it does seem like things are going pretty well, as you just mentioned. So how did we even get into this situation to even be talking about this? Yeah, I mean, it's been building for a while. You go back to 2008 when things slowed down to the point where the Fed's lowered interest rates to zero, essentially, and it was taking them longer than expected to get the economy started. So once things finally got going, they sort of caught fire. And then you throw uh, the stimulus money from COVID on top of that, and everybody's got dollars in their bank account and they're ready to travel and get out there and spend it. And we're seeing an awful lot of that. Take a war in Ukraine on top of that. And all of a sudden you have supply chain issues. So you have more dollars bidding on the same number of goods and you have fewer goods coming in than you expected. So uh, it's kind of the perfect storm for inflation and the feds want to try to raise rates to get out in front of this and engineer what they call a soft landing. Um, and that's only been actually done successfully by the feds once or twice since World War II. So how does this compare to other recessions we've had in the past? Yeah, it's, you know, each time is different. And those are some of the most dangerous words on Wall Street. But, um, you know, the last short recession was the COVID recession, which we sort of bailed ourselves out of it by printing all the money. Uh, the recession before that was the credit crisis, and before that was the dot-com bubble. Each time we saw investments and markets go into wild gyrations, and volatility was the result in our retirement accounts and other things like that. So we've started to see some of that volatility now. So far, the damage has been contained, and they just want to try to keep it that way. And as this concern grows, what are some things that, uh, you know, families can do to prepare themselves if things do take a turn for the worse? Yeah, good point. I mean, the, the thing here is to not get too excited about the economy reopening and, you know, we're paying high prices for airline tickets and things right now. You know, maybe hold off, let, let the bubble of inflation pass by a little bit here and keep some cash on hand, keep your powder dry and, um, you know, if we see the markets tumble and you've got cash, that creates an opportunity. Uh, and we've already seen it in tech stocks. A lot of those are down 30 to 40 percent this year as money rotates into things like good old fashioned utilities and, and so forth. OK, so just take it easy on the spending. Don't just jump out because it seems like things are good. Just kind of wait and see what happens. All right, I can. Yeah, you know, don't get too excited. Don't get too sad. Don't panic. And Florida is really in a sweet spot here as far as real estate and everything else goes. So I would like to think that Florida is a little bit more shielded from the recession that might be experienced in Chicago and the Northeast and other places. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Joe Cryer. A lot of informative information this morning. Thank you again for joining us. Thanks, Brianna.